So I got a text from Ari's one-on-one -on -one para yesterday and it was, hey, we're having a really hard day. Just wanted to let you know he's grabbing and hitting and cursing a lot. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the mom guilt comes in because all of a sudden I'm like, I didn't give him his Adderall yesterday morning. So maybe he's a little, you know, impulsive. That's one of the things that we use it for. And I'm feeling guilty. And, um, but then I said to her, I said, you know, or she said, he went and took a break. Let me back this up. The night before he was falling asleep and he said, did he say shut your fucking mouth but he was in like a frenzied state because he gets oh. that way but we don't I mean I <laughs> use the f-bomb sometimes I'm trying not to because I know he's a parrot but like we don't speak like that you know yeah. and so I have no idea where he heard that possibly school and so in bed in the past I've been like even when he's in that frenzied state and I know he can't rationalize with me I've been upset and like, don't say that, or I'm leaving the room, you know? So I really tried to stay neutral mm -hmm. and just be with him and like pat his back. But then he started to get kind of like physically aggressive and kicking me. So, so I didn't really, and I'm, I'm not sure. Did he say that at school or at home? No. So he said that at home the night before, oh. and then oh. yesterday at school, it kind of continued that he was saying curse words and having a hard day, like grabbing things. And so he clearly was in at night. He was in the blue, right? He was in the combo zone. That's what I mean. The combo zone. Cause he was falling asleep, but still clear frenzied a little, right? Is that what? Well, it might be I don't know. if he was frenzied is probably in the positive red zone. And can you be in the positive red zone and falling asleep? We would call that light red or pink. Okay. So I guess in that zone. But the literature wouldn't call it that. That's just what we call it. Okay. <laughs> just to make that. Yeah. No, thank you for that. I don't know. So I, I haven't gone back to challenge that because I don't even know if he remembers what he was doing. I mean, like he was, he seemed yeah. like I know his cues. He was virtually asleep or I'm sorry um, it, 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 if he said that it, he wouldn't have been in the positive red zone he'd be in the positive he would be in the negative red zone right correct yes the negative red zone the positive red zone is the flitting right and like well it's a positive it's what we say valenced meaning that his affect the way he looks is positive he looks joyful but he's in that red zone and the negative is not happy. Okay. You know, it's weird. So when these things happen, I, 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 cause he'll sometimes he did it then again this morning where he just like out of nowhere said, I hate you. And I, and I don't think he understands fully like what these curse words or what these statements mean. And so it's challenging for me because sometimes when I bring it back to him hours later or the next day, and I say, you know, that really, when you said those things that really hurt my feelings, or when you say those things at school, how do you think that makes your friends feel, you know? And then sometimes I feel like I have to get really extreme and say, those words you say could, you know, sometimes the police could get involved if you act you know, if you say things that are so mean and I don't know what to do in those moments because he oftentimes then, um, gets sillier and will increase it or the, then kind is of, the positive red zone and then, or we'll get glassy eyed as if I'm, he doesn't even hear what I'm saying. And that is, you know, so, is the blue zone, right. So that so, just means he's stressed out from the conversation. Okay. The conversation is stressing him out. That's what I figured. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I, that's what I figured. So what I said to his aide yesterday when I got this text was I said, it sounds like he's got a lot of displaced excitement. It's his birthday t- today. It's his birthday mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving town for 10 days and mm-hmm. he knows it. And that was kind of what I think spurred the conversation when he was in bed mm-hmm. because I had had, I had the coaching call with you at eight and he didn't want me to leave his room. Mm-hmm. So he was acting mm-hmm. out yeah. in his mind, thinking that I like, just because of stress, I'm not going to think he's being manipulative. I'm thinking he's feeling the stress of me leaving for the longest amount of time that I've ever left him. Mm-hmm. So I said to his aide, I said, he's got a lot of displaced excitement. Let's try to calm his nervous system. She said, he asked for a break. I said, great. And then I said, you know, I think helping him to get calm right now is going to be the best because you know he's not really going to be able to hear what he's doing is wrong in the moment Mm -hmm. or later apparently yeah (laughs) or later Mm -hmm. so so when you're when you're talking to him about his behavior without talking to him about the purpose of his behavior, it's kind of futile because it's like taking away a tool and not giving him the, any other way to manage or solve his problem. Right. And so that's what can be really stressful. Sure. And I have in the past said, cause he likes to hit like to get attention, but he doesn't know how strong he is hmm. or sometimes he'll like, hit himself and I said if you're like hit your legs tap your legs or like Mm -hmm. you know here's a fidget or something like that Mm -hmm. so in this example when he's saying something I even said to him I said well if you want to use curse words let's make some words up you know let's Mm -hmm. or do something Mm -hmm. like that I don't know if he has the articulation to do that honestly so he kept saying fuck 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 Yeah. And I, you know, I'm like, oh, don't say that <laughs> word. But so what do you suggest? Like if what tools should I give him in those moments? <laughs> He's eight. Let me just tell you that. Well, um I I would ask him, is there another word that you can say that wouldn't be so upsetting for adults to hear? Hmm. So it's really important not just give kids solutions. Right. But if you're in negative red or positive yeah. red, you're going to give solutions. Like you, you're you going to be urgent. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's just cut to the chase here. The, is the negative red, light negative red experience. And I think I'm in that often. Mm-hmm. I get triggered easily um, because I feel like in this parenting experience of with him, I'm on high alert all the time. Uh I very, I very rarely get to relax when I'm on with him. Right. Yeah. So that makes sense too. We definitely want to see what we can do to get that dialed down. Yeah, I do too. I mean, so much of it for so long, And it's still hard because his impulse control and he's becoming more independent and he wants to do more things on his own, but yet he doesn't have the critical thinking skills or sometimes even just the common sense, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And so even when I run to the restroom Mm -hmm. and I hear something in the kitchen, I'm like, oh God, what, what did he just do? Mm -hmm. You know, is he choking? Did he break something? So it's like, I am, I'm on, yep. I'm up here Tyler. all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So there's always a long-term and short-term part of parent coaching. There's the, what do we do in the moment? And what do we do to reduce the stress overall for everybody? And that's a big part of step two of the neurorelational framework is 
how to work bottom up um, in with the relationship. And then a big part of step three is how to start bottom up with the brain systems. Mm. Okay. And so, so with your relationship, you're starting a bottom up or yeah, is to start thinking about your communication with him that has nothing to do with words. Mm. So mm -hmm. what are the nonverbals and how do you express to him? I mean, says, no, I definitely, when he says things or does things, I know I can shoot a look like, yeah, like, <laughs> like you know, like the eyebrows right. are up, the eyes are wide. Right. And I'm like, yeah. what are you, buddy? Come on. So you now know? what you want to do is you want to keep that affect that you're not doing, but apply it to his problem rather than yours. Oh. Apply it to his problem rather than his behavior. Okay. So, oh, you're frustrated. I hear you. You're saying some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it would be like, Ooh, what do you need? What yeah. Do you need and to look around and say, I wonder if you would want to take that pillow and hit the couch. Yeah. I'll try it out for you. You watch me do it. See if it looks enticing. Okay. Right. I've done that in other times out of frustration when he's like, ma, 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 you know? <laughs> like a million times over. I used to think he probably said it 300 times before I've had my coffee, you know, like, whoa. Yeah. Um, like maybe you could go play with something, but I haven't been specific in saying you, you're feeling, I can tell you're feeling something. Let's try to move that or, you know, let's. Yeah. That's a good word. Move that through or move, move that through. So if, um, if he's doing that too, that this is now like the second prong of parent coaching is, okay, so we, here's what we would do in the moment. Now, what would we do to reduce the stress from the beginning of the day? When he first wakes up, what would we do that would re just set a tone for reduced stress? What would feel good? Usually for kids, it's playing with you. Yeah. Doing some, yeah. you know, for a certain amount of time that, that they know is predetermined. So setting the timer for eight minutes, if it's a school morning, for example, we are going to play for these eight minutes, anything you want to do and not asking the question, what do you want to do? Just let him do it. Sit there and wait for him. So there's no pressure to know what to do and just wait and watch. A lot of times parents are very uncomfortable with the span of time that it takes for children to figure out what it is that they want to do, but this is creativity it's on its own clock. So we just sit and watch them. And that feels good that we're sitting there and looking at them. Sure. That's, that's fueling some good feels right there. Totally. So he has become pretty reliant on waking up and grabbing my phone and getting on a specific app that shows him all the sporting events for the day. And he wants to like talk about the schedule. He wants to memorize the team's logos. He wants to know what time they're playing, what sport it is. He's practicing his reading. Is that baseball or softball? And I'm like, well, you look, tell me, don't guess, tell me what it is. So that has become something that is like the first thing he gravitates towards. And I'm conflicted with this because I don't want him on technology. I, just, I have this assumption that it's bad and it also seems to regulate him really well. Like he is in the green. He's not glossy eyed. He's engaged. He's there. His brain is working. He's doing hand eye coordination. So there's actually a lot of positive. For and then when it's done, is he in the, does he go red zone or does he stay green? Well, that's, that's, it depends. Um, I, I think mostly he probably goes red positive 
and then tries to get my attention to keep it going. So the mm -hmm. timer thing, like I could set eight minutes aside, 10 minutes aside on a school morning and say, we're going to just look at this app right now and then set the parameters that then I, then mommy's, I can't, but I, you can keep looking, but I can't look at it with you. Mm -hmm. But that's where the problem is. Cause then he'll bring, he'll come up to me and goes, mommy, what's this team? Mommy, what's this mommy? What's this? And then I'm like, I'm done. I got it. Like I have got things I need to do right now. Mm -hmm. There just doesn't seem to be because of his ADHD. And I have so many toys for him and he loves his toys in short bursts. But if I take the phone away in the morning, right now, there doesn't seem to be a replacement. Well, there won't be until he comes up with one. So there's two things there. One, when you do that with him, you go, oh, let me go grab the timer because we're doing it for this long. So that, that's for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can know 10 minutes because it's feel like an hour when yeah. you've got a lot to do. <laughs> so just put that timer on for yourself. And yeah. then when it's done, it's done and make sure that that stays consistent so that he can't, he knows that he can't reel you back in. Yeah. And okay. then he gets, he, he sort of gets accustomed to that. Oh, it went off. That's the end. Okay. Um, and then if there's any begging and pleading and things like that, you just sit there and you look at him like, oh, yeah, I know. Bummer, huh? It's hard. You show him the disappointment because he's in anxiety and he's avoiding disappointment. Okay. So you give him the disappointment through your affect, or your mm -hmm. expression. And, and you if, don't much. Okay. Don't give him if, explanations, reason. No, no, no. You just be like, yeah. Oof. It's a bummer. Mm -hmm. Do I say we can do, well, you'll get to do it again tomorrow morning. Yeah. But just once. Yeah. Never repeat anything unless you know he didn't hear you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so then as the, it's, what I anticipate happening is the behavior will spike and he'll yeah. start to be frustrated. Yeah. And then what happens? Well, if I can stay cool, it, he will peter himself out, you know, like he realizes he's not getting the desired effect. Mm -hmm. And then he starts to like calm down and realize oh, I've got to eat breakfast or, you know, things okay. like that. But it usually takes a lot of me managing that. What do you mean? Um, by that? Well, like talking him through it, like, yeah. Just don't do talk we, him through it. Just don't talk him through it. Stop working so hard. You just That's have to be a body in the room. All he needs is a warm body to, to co-regulate with you. He doesn't need your talking. Okay. Well, that is that. Okay. That's interesting. Cause you know how I said to you last week when I was like, Oh my God, all kids need is 30%. I said, I can give myself a break because yeah. I have been, the, but this is part of the 30%. Right. You just realizing. sitting there being like, I know. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. That's 30% explaining and talking and trying to coach him through it. Not necessary. Here's he's already heard it all before it's locked in there. He doesn't need to hear it anymore. You're done. Okay. You've done your work. I'm, yeah. And so what I'm hearing you say is like the over explaining mm -hmm. is a waste of energy for me. Mm -hmm. And two, it exacerbates it. Cause it's just like, he's it's like yeah bed. I know <laughs> mom, shut up mm -hmm. I got it I'm pissed that I don't have the phone but I yeah. know okay yeah okay and they really don't need he doesn't need his emotions being told told to him like no. I know that they say name it to tame it and that can work it actually works 50 percent of the time according to research um but he, he already is familiar with that language. It's only to, that's only for them to learn the language of emotions. He knows it. Yeah. But you don't need to go there. And it's sometimes, kind of, uh -huh. sometimes he does. And sometimes he doesn't. I think he gets a little confused for the longest time. Uh -huh. Every emotion he had was mad. Okay. 
which is but, normal for adults as well. Well, no, like he would name it. Like he would be, he would be. Um, I don't mean all adults, but I just, I'm just saying that's in our culture, it's normal for people to not know the name of emotions. Okay. <laughs> and it's helpful. It's helpful to know them in the moment. Not. Later. Okay. But you are taming it. If you're out and about and you want, or you you're in a hurry, tame it. But if you're not hurry, then don't tame the emotion. Okay. Let the emotion just. Okay. And just sit there and be there for him during it. And that way, because if you tame it, okay, yeah, he feels better. But all that stuff just went underground uh, right. only to pop up later. Yeah. But if you don't tame it, it comes out. And then it's more sustainable. It'll it'll last longer. And he'll have less anxiety while you're we waiting for that volcano. I love that. Okay. Yeah, and that goes to me, like, I just, it made me think of as a kid and not being emotionally supported as a latchkey kid. My mom was gone 50% of the time that when I had big feelings, I had no one to go through it with me. And like, I can feel where that is, you know, mm -hmm. it was right here in my chest, mm -hmm. just tight and like confused. And that's, that's the birthplace of anxiety. Yeah. Okay. That's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. It's hard for me. It is hard for me to see him dysregulated. Everybody. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And go ahead. Well, oh, my and, God. And I trust that, you know, even with his neurodivergence and his own, his own path, I do trust that he is capable of regulating, co-regulating mm -hmm. in this, as I practice without me managing it. Well, we are so scared of emotions, right? It's so scary to see. I was just talking to my friend yesterday, Janaki, who will also be hopefully recording sometime. And she's got two twin babies who hate to be, have their diapers changed. Mm. And so she's doing this stay listening where they start crying. She picks them up and just listens to them. And the cries feel very traumatic. They just look horrible to watch. Like she just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And, but it's either that or diaper change, right? Right. Or not not having diaper changes right sitting and, in feces which is like, not an you, option but yeah. the thing is i mean i it's hard to it's hard to look at a cry like that and believe that that's a catharsis it just looks so frightening painful for a parent yeah and yet when i have cried like that you know when i've cried the hardest i could possible cry i would just i I don't want it to be over. Right. It's nice. No, oh, it feels really good. The harder you cry, the better it feels. It feels yeah. Sad. But it doesn't look good. No. It looks really scary for a parent. Yeah. So it's hard to believe for a parent that this is actually a healing activity. <laughs> NF, NRF, and cry therapy. We got to get parents to have a major cathartic release through crying and have someone try to manage it and you know what would happen if they'd be like get out of my face let me work through this totally yeah yeah and it's that I mean, that's why we go to sad movies so we can yeah. do that. it feels so totally. good to go to a sad movie there's no other reason like why would you go someplace to <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> <Yeah. Right? laughs> so you pay true. money for that. That doesn't make sense. I mean, Hallmark knows what they're doing. It's it's therapy. Yeah. 
office therapy. It is Hallmark therapy. It's just you know, I I'm a preacher, therapy. right? We're gonna the Hallmark gonna, therapy channel. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to use that in coaching when people are like, I don't have any triggers. I don't have any. I don't need to release. Mm-hmm. Really, <laughs> go watch this movie. Go watch Beaches. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, or Steel Magnolia. Whoa. <laughs> it's just I I think. What I'm hearing myself say and what I know to be true is that I trigger so easily Mm. and then I forget to be present with these tools. Well, what helps me is to allow that cathartic experience that is happening in front of me to be mine. So Uh. when a child is crying, if I allow myself to put myself in their position the way that I do when I'm watching beaches, (laughs) <laughs> just automatically without even trying yeah it then I can see how good it feels like ah oh, I get the release too oh. so when your child is just like Whoa! uh put yourself in those shoes and feel the catharsis yourself and you actually get the catharsis that's free therapy right there I love that and is there value in saying when he's really upset I can like, is there any value in saying as I'm learning not to say anything? Like, I feel that too. Yeah. Like I'm no, I don't know. You can show it in your face. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. The nonverbals are the, the key to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you feel like I feel that too is going to be a value add for him, then by all means, follow your gut. Yeah you'll know in the moment. Sure. That hesitation of, I don't know if I should say that is probably your gut saying, don't Don't say it. Yeah. (laughs) Probably. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Most certainly. (laughs) Um, okay. You know, I worry as he gets older and the, and the larger he gets and the more physical, like just in strength that he gets that like these things, that are manageable. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, it's a typical issue. And that's why you're doing this now, because later, if you don't do it now, later it can be quite dangerous sure. to not let a child have their feelings. Um and and to have them safely. Like you're just the talking is what gets them going and yeah, becoming yeah but if you're not talking and he's learning to just learn how to release with your support Mm. then you are creating safety for his future Mm. god I love that yeah that's I I just that I'm gonna sit with that just being there is creating the container the space mm-hmm. for him to move through what he needs to move through and he can do it in his own way. And I'll, I'm just going to be here. Yeah. And, and so when that enough, happens, that's what most people don't feel when they're sitting there, like, shouldn't I be doing something and saying something? Yeah. Scientists, neuroscientists decided that the number one regulator for human beings is another human being. Mm. That's all you need to be is a human being. Mm. And another thing neuroscientists found is that the closer in relationship that you are, the more regulating you are. So basically your superpower is the fact that you're the mother of this child and just sit in that glory that you are the number one regulator for this kid. Your body and soul are that kid's number one regulator, possibly for life. Yeah. If you could just allow and get out of the way of that superpower by just, you know, embodying it, being in it. Yeah, it's so interesting to me that my perception of 
well, I, I'm going to say two things that my perception of allowing it is I'm ignoring him. Yeah. One time I asked this mom, she, I had taught her about stay listening and she said, it's not working. And I said, well, what are you looking like? What is your, show me what you look like when you're listening. And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing was, dishes like, and they're crying in the corner. <laughs> first of all, she admitted it. Yeah. Like, but she yeah. had, like, I was like, oh, okay. How do you, what feeling do you think he's getting from that? Like, how do you? Yeah. Like, she doesn't care. In fact, she thinks I'm crazy. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it's not about ignoring because you're not embodying the mother of, you know, the regulating mother Yeah, by going and doing the dishes. It's right. the presence that is so powerful. Right. It's making the connection while allowing him to do his thing and trying not to interfere, but letting him know that I'm there with him in this. But and you just let him know happen. by doing it. You don't have, yeah. you know, you're just there yeah. and yeah. you're looking at him. So your attention is on him. Yeah. And that is the magic. And so when this happens at school where he's misbehaving or something and they need to get him to safety, to stop touching your friends or stop swearing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do we, do I encourage his aid? Just be with him and look remove. at him a and I would match his affect. Okay. Emotion. No, uh, somebody, um, yesterday said it's, you're matching the ath, you're matching the emotion, not the dysfunction. I think the way she is how mm. he said it. So you're matching the emotion, not the dysfunction by, looking like, oh, you know, my brain is thinking. And so my, my face is conveying, there is a problem you need help solving. I am here for that. Mm -hmm. so it's like, that's what my face is saying. I'm like, oh, and I come and I get close and I look at him expectantly. Like I'm just waiting for the cue to figure out what to do to help. And these are kinds of things you can also say, but they get it through your nonverbals much more efficiently than through the verbals. Because when we're in stress, it's the nonverbals that really reign. Right. So what are you, you're calling that the stay and listen? Stay listening. Stay listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's literature on it. Yeah. Dogs and stuff. So she just gets close to him. She looks at him. And she just waits for the catharsis. Okay. Well, that's a lot that we can work on. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to share that I talked to him about the finger in the poop. Oh. And I said, like a day or two later, I mean, maybe more than that. I said, you know, buddy, I got really frustrated. That made mom really upset. And I don't think I said something like, I don't think I should have gotten that upset. I said, but we can't, we can't do that. I said, what do you think you could do with your hands when you're on the potty so that you don't touch your butt? I said, we could read a book. And I said, yeah, let's read a book. And it's been, I think, two and a half weeks and he has not done it. Yeah, that's I, so awesome. I know. So just once, I, you know, I'm going to go out of town, like I said, so we'll see. Cause yeah, my husband, my husband likes to let Ari like run the roost in the morning when Ari's up at six and he wants to stay in bed till seven. So God only knows what's going to happen, but yeah, I I'll hope that your house is still standing when you get uh, yeah, it will be. It's just his emotional state, you know, yeah. Jim, Jim tries really hard, but he's triggered easily too. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Lots of phone calls. 
That's yeah, okay. lots of phone, Never lots is. of phone calls, <laughs> lots of phone calls. Well, that feels really good. I again, it's just it feels so intuitive when you say these things, and I can put myself as if someone's doing this to me. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh yeah, that is what I would need in that situation. Like, that's what it's oh. all about. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Like, if you think about the old ways of doing things, when you put yourself in that situation, it's just really stressful. Totally. Through the punishments and rewards, it's just the rewards create anxiety. The punishments create anger and anxiety. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's all about what, is that how you want to be treated? No. 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 And then, so I, maybe next time I'd like to talk about just like, excitement in general like or we could talk about it right now briefly um Ari love you know he's very excited today is his birthday and he knows mm. he's gonna get some mm. gifts and things and so you know, I, yeah for sure mm. um but like I learned early on I can't even tell him if we're going X, Y, and Z, because he'll get so fixated on it and amped up and like, yeah. um, so, so this just, is just, a good place for stay listening because he's, he, the amped up stuff is usually ends in tears or a big blow up. Right. Yeah. So as soon as he starts in on you with, I don't know what they are questions, it's facing him and awaiting Okay. Because he is probably going to just get really frustrated with you. Yeah. And well, and I, you want to get yeah. it out of the way, like get that big blow up and the big crying and screaming stuff out of the way as soon as possible so that he can now face the rest of the time with calm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll be doing some practicing today. <laughs> yeah. See if there's some limit that will get him really upset so that he can get it out beforehand all right i like that could be the limit could just be i'm not going to answer your question yeah (laughs) drives him nuts yeah but you just got to be quiet and um when he's being driven nuts, make sure you're quiet so that he can escalate and just break out. You know, hopefully he will break down and cry. Have a have a release. Yeah, hopefully. That's crazy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone shows up tonight for dinner and he's red eyed, and I'm like, I know, isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> he just had a total meltdown, and I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Because now look how calm and happy he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I will be, I will be implementing that and we can, rep- I'll report back, you know, when we, when we talk again next okay. about this. Good. Yeah. Cool. Terrific. Thank you, Talia. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, and me. um. Thank you, Talia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see, I don't even, Talia. Yeah. Talia. <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Well, um, okay. We'll be in touch when I get back. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. All right, Betty. Bye.